Well, we are talking about favorite and ultra for our second game, uh, Ilya Hulsman. Uh, I don't know. I think as far as name battles go, Nelson Cisperes is way up there. So um, also ultra, I, I think just a, a fantastic player. You got your their uh, their seeds, uh, I guess, uh, but I don't I don't know how much you can really look into that. Um, they're both about the same MMR. It looks like MMA. It's like, are these physical fighters here? No, uh, uh, <laughs> they fight digitally. <laughs> into so. a digi they're gonna get pitted against each other yeah. in a digital octagon. The these are these are cyber athletes that are uh, cyber athletes. battling it out in cyberspace uh, for your amusement here. So, ah, uh, this is uh, like you said a PVT. We already got a chance to see uh, one of these, and surprisingly. Uh, Protoss player came out on top of Seriosity taking out um, uh, uh, Nyokin earlier and then, of course, uh, falling to um, uh, Terror. But I actually think anything could happen here. I don't know what to expect. So there's only one way to find out, and that's by heading on to Power Bond for our first game. We're going to have that PVT, so no more PvP shenanigans. Hoping for a long game. Hoping for something to satisfy our need for StarCraft <laughs> here. Because that right. game was quick. That game that game was quick. I mean, it's PvP, so like yeah. half the time the game just ends anyway. It's like, I have four Dragoons and you have three. Well, guess the game's over. So it wasn't quite that simple there, but I'm still ready to go. So let's get into game number two of group number B uh, here on day number one of BSL Season 7. And here we are in the upper right hand corner of the map power 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 bod. It's favorite. And his opponent in the six o'clock position as the red turn. We've got Ultra. Can you feel the power? Rapid. How are you gonna name how are you gonna name yourself Ultra, but then not like either play the music festival race or the Zerg race and build ultra lists. I don't know. I feel like you're not not really thinking that one through, but the maybe he's a just... festival race. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Wait, have, I, you I... have you never been to an ultra? Oh my gosh. No. UMF Ultra Music Festival, the greatest one out now. I'm just I'm I'm not trying to plug too many uh non endemic uh sponsors here, but I'm what just saying. What kind of music is that? What kind of music? It's like is that? it's like one of the biggest EDM festivals in the world. It's it's super oh, sick. Well. They have a huge one out here in Seoul, so I'm, I'm a uh, metalhead. Well, I'm a metalhead, so for me the go to festival is yeah. Vakan. Well oh yeah, oh dude, oh Oh, don't even get me started. I'm gonna go to uh, Vakan or The Gathering at least once in my life. It's a goal. So it's gotta happen at least once. Uh, but I'm super jealous at your proximity to Finland. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm way far away from that. Uh, but for the most part, um, what I was trying to say is that uh, Ultra, I wanna see him build Ultra lists. Maybe he can like do a Terran mind control or something. I don't know, race swap or something. I don't think that's a thing. No. <laughs> I don't, no. Let's right. talk about the game of, for a second. Uh, pretty sta uh, yeah, okay, pretty standard on both sides. We're not seeing fast expand from either player, so no shenaniganry. Yeah, we're going to see how this game goes. I mean, Ultra going for that gas. So no single Terran today playing as Protoss has actually decided to go for that gasless expansion. All of them opting to um, create that access to this coveted resource and get that factory up as quickly as possible. We'll see what he chooses to do with that. Is that going to be a defensive siege expand? Is that going to be a fake double like the one Terra tried to do against Seriosity? Hmm. Let's wait and see. Oh, Favor is actually going for a very quick expansion himself. Yeah, when I said there's no fast expand, I, I should have yeah. uh, waited for a second because this is pretty fast. You don't actually yeah. have anything to hold on against this. So if you are getting some sort of stupid proxy, then yes, you will just die. So that's... Um, is maybe a little bit risky, but uh, I like to see that uh, Ultra is playing kind of uh, more safely behind this. But yeah, I, I agree that FD push is definitely not as popular as it used to be. Um, but it's still something you have to watch out for, for sure. Yeah, um, so he's pulled SCVs out of gas and he actually scouts in the wrong direction. I feel like 
Um, if he'd gone to the top right, that would have definitely made it easier for him to make decisions um, regarding his mid game and his transition to the mid game. But for the, for the timing, like he's obviously still in the dark. He still hasn't confirmed that his opponent has gone for that super quick nexus. Um, so he's not going to have as easy a time of attacking if that's something that he was hoping to do. For the time being, he's still making marines. He still doesn't know what his opponent is doing. I imagine that upon seeing this nexus, he's going to cancel the marines. No, no, he's still actually making them. Is he going to put SCVs back in the gas? No, it looks like he's going to accept his fate, then go for a slightly delayed command center, or delayed in in comparison to the nexus, of course, because it's, uh, everything yeah. is still standard on the other side of the map for the Terran player. Yeah, I would be surprised if we see a CC. Oh yeah, there it is. So CC coming down in the base. This is a very safe way to play for Ultra. He walls on high ground with Marines in front and is building a CC on the high ground too. This guy is not taking any risks. <laughs> well, I think, like... I think he's actually trying to keep his opponent in the dark because as you can see, Favorite hasn't actually scouted his opponent. He hasn't checked yeah. anything. And I'm not exactly sure if a unit on the, that gets on the ramp spots that command center. I'm not exactly sure if that's within the vision range. So well, you might have a point there. Um, are we going to see that in a moment? Because we've got a zealot coming up. I'm going to keep. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put my view on ultra or on uh, favorites view to see if when this um, yeah, zealot see. comes through, he sees it. Let's see. Can he see the command center? No. no. Nice. How am I this smart? Seriously. You got it. That's I'm why, you, that's why you're pay <laughs> we're paying you the big BSL bucks. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, but so for the most part, yeah. yeah. That, that's what I'm wondering is like, what do you go after that? Do you say, well, I really need to see what's up there and go for like an uh, early observer uh, or do you just try to put on pressure? Because, you know, there's there's always that play that Protoss players make where you they put their Dragoons at the front of the Terran base and wait for Siege mode to finish, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised he's actually gone for a third gateway here instead of a Robo because it feels like it has potential to turn into aggression, but it's not as defensive and not having actually confirmed what, what your opponent is doing, you would probably think that going for a robo here was the safer option. Now, Favor is going to come out, he's going to see the command center, so this three gateway build might actually work out in the long run. Um, yeah, the first tank is now getting seized up. So a very defensive opening from Ultra. It, it feels overly defensive given what the Protoss has gone for. But, I mean, it's the right call. I think yeah. it's the right call here for the turn player. Well, see, here's the thing. It's like, uh, so you play defensively and now you're being attacked. So, time to put that defensiveness to use. Wow, is he going to lose all of these SCVs? That's a lot of damage. Oh, yep. That's actually a lot of damage. And he's not even going to lose all of the Dragoons either. So, yeah, so oh, last hit. Oh. Nice. Yeah, tra two Dragoons for four SCVs, I'm not sure. But one Dragoon for four SCVs is definitely a decent trade for the Protoss player. So right now, I think they're relatively even. Um, I think the the key for Ultra here is that he didn't lose a single tank. And there yeah. was definitely that threat of those three Dragoons jumping on top of a single tank when the, there was only one seized up at the top of the ramp. So definitely, he's got that going for him that he didn't lose any single tank. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, tanks are the, the only thing that keeps the Terran player alive. It's really weird because people like to talk about, you know, how strong tanks are, and obviously they are strong, but if they didn't exist or if they were, like, too weak, then Terran just, like, wouldn't be able to play StarCraft at all. So it's a, a fine line we walk when we uh, talk about the, the siege tank. They're very polarizing uh, units, but... Terran, all, or uh, Protoss player favorite, already expanding again and then maybe again again. So he's really powering uh, out there on the map. I, I feel like it took Seriosity, like, I don't know, 10 minutes to get his third base out there, but we are way fast forwarding. So basically, Ultra is playing the exact same build that Naokin was playing on Sylphid against Seriosity. He hasn't yet scouted his opponent. He's got two scanners. He's got plenty of um, energy on those combat stations. He still hasn't confirmed what his opponent is doing. Um, so we basically probably going to be seeing the same uh, follow-up as as we did as we saw Nao can do we're gonna see a third command center we're gonna see four Goliaths probably coming out of that second factory and a very strong push on plus two plus one when the Terran is maxed out he's not making any more SCVs probably around the 14 15 minute mark something along those lines maybe even earlier depending on how quickly uh, ultra actually takes his third base uh-huh 
Um, I mean, when is he going to go for that? I don't think we've seen a third CC, right? Oh, it's going to come up. Uh, like, it's probably the next building here. It, and then you throw down a starport. All right. So you, I'm so holding you, you to up. it. If it's not the next building, you are fired forever. All right. You're canceled. <laughs> I'm, I've Where's already been building? booked for one gig here. <laughs> oh, no, oh, it's, it's a supply depot. depot. All right, All folks. Right. It was fun. See, see you yeah, later. Out, <laughs> out of here. How dare you not predict the supply depot <laughs> being the next unit? Uh... Oh, okay, maybe it's the next next building. We'll give you a second second chance. <laughs> it's gonna build another. Yeah, but basically, deep. it's gonna be a command center now and then a starport, so that you get your know, upgrades lined up. Does he need a oh, he... science facility? Oh, there's the starport. Wow. Yeah, in the in the, the third Protoss, in the Protoss third base, he misrallied his oh, uh, yeah. his probes, so they're actually just chilling up there instead of mining. Oof, no. A heartbreaker right there. Finally, going back to mine. But you're right, the starport is on the way, so we uh, we are gonna be moving up the tech tree, not just. The factory spam I was wishing for. Where's the command center? It's really late. It feels late. Oh, he's actually going for his second machine shot before. Wow. Ooh. Right, yeah, he, sh he should be coming up here. He's only got two Goliaths as well. I think he's uh, confirmed that there's no uh, Robo Bay. He must have, right? He must have scanned. No, he's actually got plenty of energy on his scanners. He's only now scanning. I can hear, I can hear the scanner spinning yeah. away somewhere. Oh, he was actually fishing for that observer, I think. I, I think so. I think that's what it was. I'm not sure. But basically, he's still on two Goliaths, and you obviously <laughs> need four to two short shuttles. Oh, he's not going for any thirds to see. He's adding two more factories. Wow. I'm. What is happening I'm, here? I'm okay. Baffled. How, after playing so safely, do you decide to just go up to four facts and start like pumping it out? Because uh, he also has that starport, which I haven't seen do anything. Yeah, it has to be a six factory push, but I mean, a six factory push was what, plus two, plus one? I mean, maybe that's the plan here. Because he's going up to five factories, he's still on two bases. Yeah. I thought he was going to build that starport and like pump a, like a, a wraith out of it or something like that, but he's just going to use it for science vessels, so. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah this you, is. You mainly need the starport to start the science facility, so your plus two and plus one get lined up perfectly. And the, okay. the Wraith wasn't really necessary because he had Goliaths anyway, and he stopped producing them, so he recognized that he didn't need more than two. Wow. A look into the mind of a Terran player. Thanks, Ziggy. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking. I, that's what I think. That's what I'm, what I'm guessing here. Okay. He's actually going up to seven factories. Maybe it's what he thinks as well. Here comes the Observer in. And obviously, this is going to see everything. It's like, wow, that is quite the number of... Uh... Oh, scan, scan, snipe the Observer, and boom goes the dynamite. Nice. So now he's going to cancel those two factories and shoot down two of the existing ones to fool his opponent into thinking that this is a seventh push. But he's going to put down two command centers. I think I've broken the Enigma code here. That's, uh, well, that's, I, that's how it feels. You may just have gone, uh, gone and done it. Um, you'll know exactly where those U-boats are. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the real, uh, I guess, eventuality is that sooner or later, uh, especially once this, uh, these upgrades finish, Ultra is going to be moving out, and for for favorite, you know, it's time to maybe put the Expo game on hold. I don't know if he's going to be looking for a fourth year pretty soon, or or what. He actually does have the money for it and a probe in position on the left hand side of the map. So, yeah, I don't think you want to go for it. I think you just want to yeah. pump out units because you, you've still Obviously, got yeah. the stronger economy. Obviously, you're not going to be able to catch up in terms of the upgrades because he's got plus one attack on the way, where, whereas the Terran has plus two, plus one halfway done. So I think just mass units and get that Arbiter up and um, try and get those Stasis. Because he's got Stasis already. He's now uh, Research and Recall as well. I'm not sure he needs that Recall, actually. I think he could put that money into units or a fourth base. Because you've got Stasis anyway. The Terran is looking to fight. So right. you're probably going to have to fight anyway. All right? That's, that's how I'm thinking. I, th I, th I think that I am also thinking how you are thinking, so good That's job. That's good. It's good we're on the same page. My thing is like, where, where are my zealots at? What do we have? <laughs> five zealots? We have six zealots? I feel like you may need a couple zealots more. Uh, this is quite a few siege tanks, my dude. Like, uh, yeah, I hope this doesn't end like terror against like, seriosity. <laughs> like terror <laughs> for seriosity. Like you go towards it and then you surrender before like the first shot is fired. And like, Ugh. I don't know about that, but I love what Favorite's doing. He's splitting his army apart uh, so that if Ultra does decide to unseat and move out, he's going to get pincered and destroyed. So, 
Oh, well, there's not that many units, and there's only Dragoons here. There's not that many zones that could tank the damage. Where did this... Yeah, there just aren't that many Zealots at... Oh, they're all at home. Yeah, but it's still not that many. I mean, well, granted, he's nearly maxed out, so there's not that much room. There we go, there's more Zealots now coming out of the gateways. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Ultra, this certainly isn't a situation I'd want to be... I'd want to find myself in. He's now getting plus two, plus one, only about to finish in just a couple of seconds. He's got a massive army, that's 162 supply, but he's got everything riding on this one attack. If this attack doesn't end the game, then, I mean, he might as well just leave. Because I don't really see him coming back into this game if this attack fails. That's right. Well, he is about to hit those upgrades in just a second. There it is. Plus two uh, weapons finished, plus one armor finishing in three, two, one. And, okay, soon. Um, but he's starting to push out. Forcing sieges is, is exactly what Favorite needs to do right now. I don't think he can. I think this Terran army is going to infinity and beyond all the way into the natural or the third base. Yeah, the Protoss player trying to run around the entire bulk of the Terran army. But Ultra not falling for it. He's going to move back. So they're going to just start dancing in the middle of the map, trying to, trying to fish for a good position here. And it feels like Ultra might be able to find it. But just as I say, Favorite is once again looping around, moving towards that opening uh, between, the, between the natural and the third. Yeah, I thought Ultra was going to go around the other way, stop the army, and then go towards the, the natural, or the, the third base. But no, he is going in it to win it. Are we say, going to see, dare I say, a base trade? Yeah, it feels like it. I think the Terran, the Protoss player has recognized that he can't necessarily take the um, Terran army head on because he's got inferior upgrades and he's got the inferior tech as well, or at least it feels like it. That's a good stasis at the at the natural, and it looks like Ultra is actually going to be going for, um, for the defense here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he's is going to come back. back home, and I think he waited until the Protoss was in a uh, position where, where, what are those storms? Those are not great storms at all. Um, there, were, there were a couple of tanks there that were blocking up the, the ramp. I mean, yeah, but now you have nothing to stop yeah, yeah, the army right. when it comes back right. to kill you. So, congratulations, you killed three tanks with your storms, and now you lose your whole army. So, sick. Um, well, he does have four bases, and the Terran is stuck on two, so yeah. maybe he's got time to rebuild. I mean, look at the supply. It's 156 yeah. to 154. You're I'm right, but to, I'm going to invoke the of spirit is... of Yoan Merlo and say, look at the supply. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, French accent. I wonder, I wonder how much of that is just in like extra workers or what. Like his, his natural is not mining, so that's not a base. He still has, he's way oversaturated yeah. in his main. So favorite could do with some main arting going on there. To mention another Starcraft two caster in the same sentence. Uh, but it um, was, it was a different main art that came out. Uh, true, but you know. Same yeah, right. uh, so basically, favorite's on two bases right now. He has no mining at his fourth. Okay, just started mining there and no mining it is natural um mm -hmm. well so he, not... go ahead sorry no it's just not that much yeah, i was just saying that it, it, all he was trying to do this game is avoid a head-on engagement and well it's knocking at this door again so he's good it, it looks like he's going to go around once again but i it doesn't feel like he's close enough to be of any threat to his opponent there's a third yeah. building but he's still quite far away his natural is about to fall. His main might be cracked open as well. There's plenty of tanks sieging up. Plus uh, two, plus one. Favorite super supply block too. He's down like 20 yeah. supply uh, off of that, losing that those pylons. And so he's just gonna try to go for it. I think this is a, a good decision, but I don't know if it's gonna be very successful. Yeah, he had, uh, as he was attacking, he was trying to defend, but it was a bit of a half-hearted attempt because he only sent like half his units or they might have just been pulled in by the tank fire, but it looks like Favorite is falling apart on both fronts here. He's still trying, he's still got his third, got his fourth, but his main is about to be cracked open. This tank seized up at the bottom of the ramp. The Terran army is knocking yeah. on the door of the Protoss player. He's getting in, he's just sealing the deal. We're just yep, waiting reaching for the high ground. Yeah. Ultra man, he turtle on two bases. Uh, probably the best skill to have as a Terran player. Uh, and then you bust out and win the game. I, and obviously that's way oversimplifying it uh, because Ultra did play that sort of mind game. Do I go? Do I stay? Do I go? Do I stay? He pulled back, killed off Favorite's army, and now 
with nothing to stop him in his tracks, we are uh, probably going to win the game. Although, wait a second, did this replay bug? Like, Ultra's not spending any money. Um, no, he's spending. Okay, money okay, okay. Yeah, my, he just did. All right. On my tab. Okay. Me. Okay. Uh, he is spending money. I think I think the replay is definitely bugged here. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think we're gonna remake the game here pretty quickly. That was a little weird, but uh, you didn't see anything. We'll go back to about 16 minutes and come back where uh, we where we last left our heroes. Uh, so don't worry about it. I mean, <laughs> I, was, I, I was so I, confused there because, like, you know, I like to think I know a thing or two about Brood War, and I look at that, and I'm just like, something's not right here. I mean, I, I didn't even notice because because I was I was sure that Ultra was just thinking, oh, I've won this. I'm not going to macro. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, how are you going to stop my army? I've got plus two, plus one tanks and vultures and goliaths literally in your main. Why would I even think of macroing, right? But yeah, hey, good good catch there, Rapid, because I certainly didn't pick up on it. Oh, so I, I, every once in a while, I, I remember I was casting with Nyokin and we cast we must have cast like maybe a solid five minutes of a bugged replay. And we're like, why are these wow. units going there? I don't know where that's going. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Because the units were like, like just moving to random spots on the map. It didn't make any sense. Oh my gosh, that was so stupid. But I only made that mistake once. So now I'm pretty good at catching it. Um, so now we're going to play Maybe it was just zero keeping us on our toes here. You know? Okay, so we're what are we here? watching here? Uh, Okay, I think we're gonna start it from about like 15 minutes or so, 16 minutes, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it looks like it. 15:55 calls now. So. Okay, all right, guys. Pretend like you just forgot the last two minutes of your life, which isn't hard to do if you're stuck on a social media laden dopamine loop. So we're or gonna write goldfish. That. Oh yeah, that's true. Goldfish, uh, marmoset, something like that. We're going it's back into it. Here we go. So yeah, I mean they're just sealing the deal here. I don't, I don't see how Favorite could, could come back into this game. He's he's only got one Arbiter, right? It doesn't have any energy for any spells, and the Terran player is literally on top of his production here. And he does have the full, but there's only three gateways there. What's his upgrades? Plus two attack. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're breaking this because the Zealots are just slowly trickling out one by one, getting shot down by the tanks and the vultures. Yeah, and the tanks aren't sieged, so there's no hope for like, yeah, uh, I don't know, any, any collateral damage. So yeah, yeah, no friendly fire. Well, now they are sieging certainly, and uh, yeah, I think everything is pretty dead. Yeah, we just looks like we're just waiting for favorite to tap out here because there's nothing clever we can actually say about this game. Ultra is going for his third base in case I don't know somehow this army gets killed. But I really don't see that happening. We've got a couple of vultures running into the fourth or the third, actually. There's only a couple of tanks here. Sorry, cannons. Race to defend. <laughs> oh god, if the Protoss play ahead the tanks. Imagine that. Uh, yeah, let's not think about that. Dual saying this replay is broken, but the last one was okay because the Protoss player wasn't dying. I'm like, okay, well, <sighs> uh, unfortunately, we have to you know, go with this replay. Uh, but uh, maybe in an alternate re reality, there's a universe where uh, Favorite wins this game. Unfortunately, uh, it is going to be Ultra, I believe. I mean, I'm not sure, but it certainly looks like he's doing okay this game. Yeah, 168 supply. He's got plus three attack on his units as well. He did lose one armory by the look of, by the looks of things. Um, so he's not he's not getting two upgrades at the same time, but really does he need to? He's getting his full Protoss player is eventually going to clear this army out but ultra is literally doubling his opponent in terms of supply the third base has fallen has been broken the probes oh, all, all the high temple are gonna get picked well. off yeah yeah oh man well That's uh rough. yeah speed vultures versus cannons hmm. So now all of these probes are going to die. Are they actually going to kill the cannon off so they can kill every probe? Wow, that's hilarious. The probes are fighting. Oh, oh, does he get the cannon? Yes, but he only has one vulture left with one HP and that vulture dies. So clearly killing the probes would have been the better option there. But I mean, hey, the next vulture run by is going to be sick. Yeah, so our German slash Russian player is clearly invoking the spirit of, 
or fantasy on a, on a Ouija board or something because he's still not tapping out and I literally don't see a way back into this game. He's got one base worth of mining and basically one base worth of production and the Terran player has plus three attack plus one armor. I just don't see his way. Yeah, you know, when three vultures are back killing your Nexus. Game. Yeah, you know things are wrong when vultures are killing your next site. Exactly. He stasis yeah. three vultures as well, uh, so... Hmm. I don't know, man. Uh, it seems pretty over, but hey, you never know. I mean, actually, yes, you do know. Yeah. Uh, we as casters certainly know. Oh, what is this, like a five base Terran player? Yeah, one, two, three, four, four base. Four, four. Okay, all right, it's only He's four base. He's just taking his fifth. fifth. Just taking yeah. his fifth, yeah. Oh, jeez. All right, well, uh, I mean, I guess what Favorite is thinking is, okay, I've got this, like, hit, like not hidden, but, like, base off to the left-hand side of the map. Maybe that one works. Maybe, uh, no, no. I don't but know. How, how, be how badly would the Terran have to mess up to lose Look, in this I've position? Look, I've seen some things, okay? I've seen worse, so let's never never count I it out. Oh. I don't I don't have a, a, a reference for, for Brood War when it comes to big throws like that. But yeah. if, if you've ever watched Star Trek 2, if you've ever seen MVP against Tefel, then you know what I'm oh, talking about. Oh, gosh. The, the European hope. That was... Whew. That was a rough one. That was painful that, to watch, and so that, was this that, one. That's pretty OG, but yes, you're correct. Yeah, I mean, the Terran is now breaking another main. Like, breaking one main is not enough to win. <laughs> Gotta seize the production here. At the I love I love the uh, science vessel EMPing one High Templar. Yeah, one high and then high there's still Templar. also a storm from another one, but it doesn't even matter. Like, things are just so over here. Yeah. There's literally nothing clever we can say about this. Favorite I wish I could see, like... <laughs> long distance mining in the natural. So there's still hope. Yeah, but... is there? Yeah, I mean, he certainly thinks so. Uh, I don't know about that. I feel like... Like, there's rational and irrational hope. I feel like we've got one of those here, so... Uh, Stace is on the tanks, just to be annoying, and flying into Goliath. That's gonna do it, GG. Favor taps out, and Ultra takes game number two to advance on to the winner's match. Thank you for sparing us the rest of the game. Yeah, he definitely could have survived at least another five minute, minutes. Yeah! And if he could have figured out how to float his Protoss buildings, he would have, uh... That's coming in StarCraft 3. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I've... Insider. All races can float their buildings. Sick. Well, that's game number two, and it was a little bit anticlimactic there towards the end. But hey, uh, I think if you remember way, way back, Ultra turtled on two bases, made a very concerted push across the map. There was that sick base trade moment. Then Ultra made the choice to come back to defend, which turned out to be the right choice, and then pushed across the map for the win. So, sick. Killing it. I mean, clearly, Ultra showing that he's the superior player here. Because, I mean... Favorite knew everything. He knew about everything. He got an observer into the main base. He saw seven factories. He knew that this would be a two base attack, a two base all in, and still kind of got outplayed. So, you know, it, it feels like Ultra is the stronger player here. As I've said, I'm not particularly familiar with these, uh, with these competitors here, except for Favorite, because he actually plays on the European server. So I get to run into him every now and then. Right. But I will take your word for, for him actually playing in the STPL quite a lot. Um, so you might be more familiar with him than, than I than I am, but clearly Ultra showing that he's the superior player out of the two. And